Right now at 6, the cool down is coming. Sizzling temperatures now, but this cold front means a big change over the weekend. But these hot, sunny days could have your energy bills skyrocketing. Last uh, July and August, our uh, heating bills were running in the 340 to 360 range because we keep our house very cold. While solar energy used to cost you a fortune, times are changing. I think the biggest thing uh, that's really driven people's interest in solar is the decline in cost. Tonight, we have a 360 in-depth look at solar energy from those who are already saving money. A lot of times we see savings of anywhere from 10 to 15 percent. To the challenges ahead to make it a fully reliable energy source. Well, this was a good way to spend the day <laughs> today. We have a Denver 7 Weather Action Day in effect for the hot weather, and we didn't quite hit triple digits today in the Denver Metro, but boy, we were close. Good evening. Thank you for watching Denver 7 News at 6. I'm Ann Trujillo. I'm Shannon Ogden. Now, we've been in the streak of temperatures in the 90s or above, so tonight we're going to take a look at other energy sources to try to cut down on your monthly bill. First, though, we want to get to Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson. Mike, you have some good news as we head into the weekend. I do. It's cloudy right now, which has helped give us a little bit of shade on what's been otherwise a very hot day. Temperatures hit 98 in Denver and Greeley, 99 in Fort Collins and out in the Eastern Plains. They did get the triple digits as they did out west. Currently, with the cloud covers drop back a little bit, we're down to 93 in Denver, 97 still at Greeley, and it's still in the low 100s out on the Eastern Plains and in Grand Junction. Heat advisory there until 8 o'clock and on the Northeast Plains. That heat advisory for those temperatures anywhere from 95 to 105 earlier on this afternoon. But some good news is coming up. We have one more really hot day for tomorrow, but there'll be more thunderstorms late in the day on Saturday ahead of a cold front that will move in Saturday night. Sunday is cooler, storms likely, and much of next week will be cooler and wetter. I'll have your full seven day forecast coming up in about 15 minutes. Sounds good. Thank you. Fire crews on the West Slope are getting a handle on a fire that's burning near Parachute. That's about 45 minutes east of Grand Junction, and you can see just how close this fire is burning to homes. Several neighborhoods have been forced to evacuate, and as of 430, the Garfield County Sheriff's Office said no homes were lost, but some fences and electrical poles have been damaged. And while you may not prefer these hot Sunday days right now, they could provide a lifeline for Colorado in the future. There's a lot of untapped potential in what these sunny days can do for cleaner energy in our state. Now, it used to be that only some Coloradans could afford solar panels. Installing solar panels on a roof can increase the cost from $15,000 to $30,000. But the cost of the technology is getting cheaper. Since 2010, the cost of solar power has decreased by more than 80%. Solar options are also expanding. Well, Denver 7's Megan Lopez kicks off our 360 in-depth coverage, showing us three options for people who want to save on their electricity bills by harnessing the sun. It used to be. This is the, the most of the panels are on this side because the sun comes up over here and sets this way. That the only way to tap into the power of the sun was to buy your own solar panels. So the sun's on them all day long to have someone install them on your roof and to retrofit your home in order to see savings. But not anymore. The technology has changed and so have the options. So if you're considering solar, here's a 360 look at three of them. First up, the traditional route in this Aurora neighborhood. We were the first one on the street to get them and now there's at least four on the street. Lou Patterson is sort of a trendsetter. He decided to make the switch to solar last year. Our uh, heating bills were running in the 340 the 360 range. After a lot of research, he decided to lease his solar panels, paying nothing up front but $133 a month for the panels. So these days, my XL energy bill now is $9.75 a month, and that's hookup charge. Between that and the solar panel costs, Lou is still seeing a savings. It's the same every month, and and it's a. Uh, about a third of what I was paying before. The second option, solar co-ops. Create a new product. Like the one the nonprofit Solar United recently held an open house about in Denver. Our main focus is to help people go solar, to come together in the community. This is where a group of homeowners comes together to purchase solar panels using bulk buying to get a discounted price. And because it's a group buy program, oftentimes we see savings that people can realize. The solar panels themselves go right on the home, just like the first option. But finding a big enough group for that bulk discount can be tricky. 
tricky, which is why groups like Solar United exist. The third option, buying a share in a solar farm. Which allows homeowners to purchase a share of solar, not on their rooftop, but where it's convenient. Colorado was the first state in the country to buy solar gardens. Already, we have more than 100. These gardens can accommodate 10 or more homes or businesses, and there's a lot of benefits. A community solar garden means that a, a lower or moderate income family uh, doesn't have to worry about making a large upfront cash investment. So how do you pick the option that's right for you? It comes down to a couple of things. One, how long will I be in my house and can my house actually take solar on its roof? And consider things like how much sun do you get? How much energy do you use? And how much cash can you put down? But the bottom line... One of the things we know about solar is that it increases the value of a home. So no matter which option you go with, just about anyone these days can tap into the power of the sun. Megan Lopez, Denver seven. And there is a federal tax credit you can receive for installing solar panels on your home, but there's no upfront state rebate. There's also some local rebate programs, though, like a new one in Denver. Of course, always do your homework before buying. Now let's take a closer look now at why the solar energy industry really hasn't picked up more steam. It starts with the systems we already have in place. Currently, there are more than 5,800 major power generators in this country. That consists of more than 150,000 miles of transmission line. 450,000 miles of electric wires distribute the powder, uh, power to 145 million households in this country. And getting away from that system that's been in place for decades takes a lot of work. Now, it shows. Now, currently, solar energy only provides about 3% of electricity in this country. So we want to hear from you now. What do you think of solar energy in Colorado? Have you made the switch? Do you think the systems we have in place are sufficient enough? You can share your thoughts by emailing us 360 at the Denver Channel .com. Well, Boulder police want to hear from witnesses of a violent attack along the city's bike path yesterday. Boulder police say it happened near 13th and Arapaho about 1245. They say a man grabbed a 75 year old woman by the hair and threw her to the ground. A passerby was able to pull the man off until police arrived, and police arrested 24-year-old James Moore for this attack. They see, say he has no known ties to Boulder, so if you saw anything, please do call police. Mesa County Clerk Tina Peters turned herself into the Pitkin County Jail last night after a warrant was issued for her arrest. She was released about an hour later once she paid that $1,000 bond. And Peters was wanted for violating the terms of her protection order by emailing designated election official for Mesa County. Peters was removed as an election official herself after allegedly tampering with elections equipment. Earlier this month, she also violated her bond by traveling out of state. Car thefts are up at DIA, and we've been telling you about that for months now. But tonight, we're getting a different perspective on what's happening to cars after they're taken. Denver 7's Patrick Perez spoke to a Northwest Colorado couple who says their car was illegally resold to unsuspecting people. Nick and Shannon Davis are happy to be reunited with their beloved Dodge Charger. Came back and there's some damage, nothing that's terrible, but there is some damage. A thief stole the car from the Pikes Peak lot at Denver's airport at the end of last month. We reported on a theft then as Shannon had left a necklace containing her father's ashes inside the car and wanted it back. Nick told us at the time how much it meant to Shannon. She was in tears sobbing. Uh, just destroyed. Days after the car was stolen, a Longmont police officer found it here near 10th and Main Street during a traffic stop. He knew something was up because it had a stolen Texas license plate. The couple sitting inside the car, police say, had no idea it was stolen. They found a good deal online and even gave the thief cash for it in person. They thought this was all legitimate because they got a title, which ended up being fake. Now they're out their cash and they're out their, their car because it's a stolen car. Chief Jeff Satter with Longmont PD doesn't know how common this is, but says it has happened before. I'm compassionate and I don't want that to happen to anybody in our state. So take a little time just to investigate and it will save you a lot of trouble. He recommends if you're buying a car from someone, run the car fax and make sure the titled owner matches the seller's ID. That way, don't let them give you a plate because that's that should be a, another red flag. The case was referred back to Denver police, which says there still haven't been any arrests and still no sign of the necklace holding Shannon's father's ashes after picking up the car from a Longmont tow lot. Unfortunately, now there's more victims in this. It's not just us. It's also the, you know, the couple that that purchased the vehicle. The couple says they never plan to park at Denver's airport again. I hope this doesn't happen to any more people, but I 
unfortunately, no, it will. Patrick Perez, Denver 7. And as of Sunday, Denver police say 169 cars have been stolen so far this year from DIA's parking lots. Colorado Senators Hickenlooper and Bennett are calling on the CDC to increase access to monkeypox vaccines across the country. They joined 20 other senators writing a letter to the CDC and Department of Health and Human Services. They say it's time for both agencies to really address the inequities of vaccine access. As of yesterday, there were 37 confirmed cases of monkey monkeypox here in Colorado. Tomorrow, the city of Aurora will continue events to remember and honor victims and survivors of the 2012 theater shooting. There's a 5K to raise money for a scholarship fund. At 145, there's a formal reflection ceremony to read the names aloud and honor the victims. At 3 p.m., there's a free community event with food and live music. And then at 720, there will be a special art presentation with the theme Metamorphosis. We chose the theme Metamorphosis this year because um, it's we feel like we've all gone through a metamorphosis from 10 years ago from the tragedy and to where we are now. And we also think it relates to everyone really with COVID and everything that's been going on so everyone can relate to it. And we have information on all of these events and ceremonies that have already taken place this week. You'll find it all on the DenverChannel.com. Three Denver men are used to helping others. Tonight, they're the ones getting some help. No one told me. I was just expected to come in and say, what's up? What am I doing? Plus, it's time to get your ticket. Just how much money a lucky winner can take home in tonight's Mega Millions drawing.